uh, for Global Business Updates. Rotsu Diri joins us. Rotsu, good morning. Where are you joining from this morning? Uh, joining you from um, a residential area of the top 1%, as they say. We're going to get to that story. Uh, <laughs> good morning. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Rotsu. Back good morning. to bases. Good, good stuff. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, so we begin with uh, artificial intelligence, IHC, which is uh, um, a conglomerate in Abu Dhabi. They are adding a virtual bot to their boardroom, right? So they've been working on um, their AI division, I think it's called G42, in collaboration with uh, Microsoft. And they said, hey, look, you know what? This is a conglomerate, one of the biggest conglomerates in Abu Dhabi. And um, they, uh, in UAE, excuse me, they want to test out this artificial intelligence bot. So they're going to be adding a uh, AI virtual bot to their boardroom. It's not going to have any voting power. Um, it's not going to be making any decisions. It's just going to be sitting there in an observatory, uh, observation role, observatory role, just to see what's going on and possibly give uh, feedback. Uh, it's quite, uh, quite interesting uh, with what, what the ramifications are. Again, everybody making advancements in artificial intelligence. Let's still stay in the Middle East and move to Egypt. You remember that we reported, of course, that um, Egypt had signed a $35 billion investment deal with um, the UAE. And um, President uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi, in a televised, I think it was an interview he granted yesterday, or tele an address, he said that one part, part of the funds have been received. And he says another part will be received, I think, Friday and then over the next month or so. He didn't say the amount of money um, that has been received, but he did say that part a partial amount is in. So remember, it's a $35 uh, billion dollar deal. We showed the video of the real estate company um, in, uh, in Egypt that, of course, talked about all the positives and what they could bring in terms of investment. The UAE did not just want to give money to Egypt and just say, we're giving you money to help you out with your FX crisis. We actually want to put something behind those funds and invest in something. And Egypt, of course, Arise News was in uh, Sharm el Sheikh for the African Development Bank annual meetings. We covered it. Uh, we've been to Egypt several times, and it's, uh, Sharm el Sheikh is just it's a beautiful coastal area. This, uh, this is more of that investment that, um, that is going to be put forward from, uh, from the UAE, and it's going to help Egypt with what is expected to be another devaluation of the Egyptian pound in order to secure, I think, another 10 or so billion dollars from uh, the IMF. So the IMF has withheld uh, those funds, saying that, look, you've got to devalue your currency, you've got to remove subsidies. You know the, you know the story. Um, from there, let's go back to artificial intelligence, lots of artificial intelligence today. Uh, Mr. Oliver Dowd, uh, Dowden, who is the uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, in the UK, has been saying that artificial intelligence is the only way to cut civil service costs. And this is very interesting since, you know, Arise News this day, everybody has been reporting on the Orosaya report and how to collapse agencies and how to reduce cost of governments. Has anyone mentioned artificial intelligence in Nigeria? I know the uh, Dr. Bosun Tijani and the ICT ministry, digital economy ministry, they've been talking about AI, but AI saves costs, right? In terms of digitizing tasks, mundane tax, tasks that an individual could do. Now, of course, the flip side of that is, you know, possible job losses. But again, you can, this is, this is, it is what it is if you want to save costs. Um, Dowden says that the cabinet office in the UK is looking to spend, I think, about 24, uh, looking to spend about 10, 10, 14 billion pounds, I think, is the amount or so, uh, on um, AI tools um, that they're going to be using to digitize their, their um, operations. The civil service in the UK, NHS, UK is facing a lot of cost pressures. The IPPR, the Institute of Public Policy Research, has said that the UK can save, I think, about 24, 25 billion uh, pounds sterling a year by using artificial intelligence uh, in order to save on, on costs. More AI. Um, in fact, I can actually tell folks, Arise News and even the BBC are both exploring, exploring AI in journalism, just looking at how it could work in terms of 
uh, writing headlines or spell checks. For now, neither the BBC nor Arise News is going to utilize in AI for any of the headlines that our viewers on Arise News or readers of this day newspaper, uh, newspaper of Nigeria's newspaper of record. None of those, non AI is not involved in anything. It is still human beings that Arise is using. It's still human beings that the BBC is using. But you got to look forward, right? And so, you know, I like to, you know, we here at Arise are very, you know, we love to talk, we discuss technology, involve it. The BBC also looking at it. So for now, it is just in an exploration uh, mode. They're, they're not exactly moving forward with it. Um, the ultra rich, uh, there's a new report from uh, Knight Frank Real Estate. Um, this is a uh, real estate company that brings out a wealth report every year. Apparently, you need about $5.8 million now to crack um, the top 1% in the United States. So uh, um, essentially, that has actually moved up in terms of the amount of wealth that the stock market has generated for a number of con uh, countries around the world, uh, in terms of inflation and what the impact is having, the power of currencies. If you look at the list, I think about top 10, you can see Monaco. Monaco, you need 12, almost $13 million to be able to crack the top 10 uh, in uh, Monaco. GDP per capita in Monaco is over $200,000. Novak Djokovic lives there. Uh, a number of other very wealthy people um, live uh, in Monaco. Apparently in China and Japan, China, you need a million dollars to top the 1% in China, only about $2 million, uh, for Japan. You can see other countries on that list, uh, Sweden, Australia, uh, and the likes. Uh, we get to, I think, we get to Nigeria now. And... Um, I already, I, and I, Rufai, I already heard you both already discussing this in terms of biddens and the fact that This Day News, of course, has a, a very in-depth article on that at the top of the masthead uh, for our, this, today's This Day News, that um, Binance is facing, apparently, you know, billions in fines uh, for allegations of currency uh, manipulation. We, of course, have already reported that uh, some executives who flew in were detained, their passports uh, were seized. Um, you heard um, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Olayemi Cardoso, I think I already mentioned it, saying that 26 billion had left the nation through Binance. But it would have helped if he gave us a net net. I mean, there's, you know, there's money going in and there's also there's money going out and there's money coming in. So giving us 26 billion going out is not the full story. Well, how much came in and what is it on a net net basis? And just to remind people, this is peer to peer trading, right? Binance is a platform. If IO has USDT, which is USD Tether, which is a stable coin that, is, that has a one to one ratio value with the US dollar, and I have Naira, and I want to purchase USDT from IO or Rufi, I will go on the platform and indicate I want to, to buy. IO will then say, okay, well, I will sell it to you at this amount. And then Binance as the exchange will, of course, it'll hold it in something like an escrow to make sure the trade goes through between the two of us. So we'll hopefully get some more information on how currency manipulation works in here because P2P trading has been going on for a long time. And, you know, as Egypt is facing a currency crisis, um, we haven't heard, you know, Binance trades everywhere. Binance doesn't just trade for uh, platforms for Nigeria. You can go on Binance and if you have Egyptian pounds, you can buy USDT. We haven't heard officials in Egypt with all their currency crisis uh, detaining or uh, finding Binance. So it's very interesting that this is just focused on Nigeria. As Rufai said earlier, and I have to agree, Nigeria's issues with FX are supply. Um, now, now, of course, we'll have to get to see what, the, what comes out of the investigation from the Securities and Exchange Commission. But we just want people to understand exactly how P2P trading works and, you know, if a willing buyer, willing seller. That's exactly how the, the, the platform works. Uh, finally, Nestle, Nestle Nigeria releasing their earnings um, yesterday. My word, 104 billion Naira pre-tax loss. Now, at the top line for Nestle, 527 billion Naira in top line revenue. Uh, about 336 billion of that was for food. About 193, 190, something billion was for beverages. A 24 percent uh, growth in terms of revenue. But as you look down further on the earnings for Nestle, you can see their finance costs. 
<laughs> massive increase in finance costs. But really, the issue here, because remember, this is a subsidiary of uh, a, a parent company that's outside the nation. Of course, that is, of course, Nestle, one of the oldest beverage, food and beverage companies, uh, consumer goods companies in the country. Um, it was ex foreign exchange. If you look at their foreign exchange losses, I think it was about 195 billion naira of uh, FX losses. Of course, due to the devaluation of the currency that happened uh, in June of last year. Um, I mean, consumer goods companies have been hit really, really hard. And, you know, the, the breweries companies, for example, recording losses, consumer goods. Also, uh, more headwinds they face is inflation. Um, and also, more headwinds they face is the, the purchasing power of the average Nigerian. We talk a lot about shrinkflation. Shrinkflation is where a, 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 an item remains at the same price, but it's, 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 they reduce the amount of the item that, that you get. Of course, there is, of course, NAFDAQ facing off with the manufacturing Association of Nigeria over um, alcohol being sold in sachets. They're doing that because uh, this alcohol, the breweries people are doing that because, you know, if you think about the cost of putting uh, alcohol in a bottle and so on, it's impacting people. Real quick, um, I think still on Nestle, if you look at their stock price, Nestle stock has been struggling. Uh, even despite the fact that the NGX is up about, what, 35, 36% year to date. Um, of course, there's been some, the, the NGX, by the way, fell after the MPC hiked interest rates, there's an inverse relationship between higher interest rates and stocks. If people, as we talked about yesterday, if more people see higher interest rates in treasury bills, bonds, and so on, they are likely to uh, rebalance their portfolios, pull money out of the equities market, and go into fixed income and money market. So even though the stock market fell yesterday, it is still up double digits. And so Nestle has under, Nestle Nigeria has underperformed the stock market. If you look at the stock, 10% year-to-date drop over the last one year is down about 27 or 26%. Uh, two years, about 31%. Over the last three to five years, down about almost 37%. So the stock has been struggling, again, as a result of um, challenges in Nigeria. Uh, but then, what, you know, you always love looking at, I love looking at financial statements. Finally, if you look at personnel costs for Nestle Nigeria for 2023, $40 billion is what they spent on personnel costs in 2023. You'll see salaries, uh, wages, and allowances amounting to about 21 billion naira uh, in terms of how much uh, was spent. But interestingly, look at the rest of the categories. Housing subsidies was the second highest category in which they spent money on, to, to the tune of about 5 billion naira. But in terms of the year-on-year -year growth, the item that saw, the, the line item in their personnel cost that saw the biggest growth was transport subsidies. So that could be staff buses to move staff uh, from homes to um, the office. It could also be purchasing cars for directors and so on and so forth. A 65% growth uh, in their year-on-year -year, uh, transport subsidies for Nestle. Uh, that uh, is our update for today. Me and you, 100%, we are married on that issue of finance. I don't think it's the way forward for governments now pushing the blame. Because you remember, on this same show, somebody put the blame on Rufai and his friends for the dollar going up. Somebody put the blame on me and my friends. Because, like you said rightly, this is peer-to-peer. Trading. You are saying they should bring this like their KYC. For accounts that were generated through software, I mean, how does it even work? So these are the things we are saying. And I'm sorry, was Binance there in the early 80s when we first started the evaluation of the 1986? Was Binance the cause of all our currency problems all this while up to this time? You have said it all. It's liquidity. We are not producing enough to earn enough dollars. That's just it. Let's improve on that because all of this, we, because we are just making ourselves look very bad. In one breath, we are the ones that launch in Naira that say, oh, we are thinking for it. Because one way or the other, all these cryptocurrencies that we are trying to buy because we don't is the future of money. Just like AI is the future of civil service and newsroom and anything. All right? And uh, Rotus, for you to say you don't know if uh, AI... You don't know, maybe chat GPT has been writing, chat uh, GBT, as they, some people like to call it, <laughs> has been writing some articles somewhere. You never know. Chat GBT could make some research work faster. It's true. So AI is already everywhere. You can't tell me AI is not already in the Nigerian newsroom. It's already in the Nigerian newsroom. Some quick articles you are seeing people are knocking out your record. You might know they might be chat GBT, as they call it, because it, it does the work quickly. But it just goes to the point. 
that AI definitely will revolution. I think when we're even talking about the Oral Cerebral, I was talking about AI for government, AI for the civil service. Because you look at so many things that could be done through AI, through blockchain, people like messengers that carry files. You can load up most of the files on a blockchain system. And those messengers that push files to office to office will no longer be there. That once you put a file on the blockchain system, even to the top echelon can see the file, sign it up still on the blockchain system and document it. So the role of messengers, those things are fast going. Just like the role of typists, you know, started becoming obsolete. Those like some roles like clerks started becoming obsolete. But the good thing about AI is it will not create new jobs for the future. And for Nestle, I think it's just a reflection of the very tough economic terrain. And that's why I'm happy that uh, President Tinubu also had some manufacturing representation on that, his panel, you know, to be able to look at how the economy is going to work, because that matters a great deal. We have a lot of challenges in our economy, and those results are really, really very bad. I mean, look at it one fell swoop, how a lot of shareholder funds were just, you know, creamed off like that. And, you know, I'm not sure, would Nestle be able to pay dividends this year with that, with that kind of report? I doubt. All right, uh, Rotus, just very quickly. You have I, to have revenue. You have to have after profit to pay dividends, yeah. Um, just to, um, I'd like to compare the incidents, you know, especially with regards to the investigations that are ongoing and the illegal flow of money on the Binance um, platform and the questioning of the two executives who, like, whose identity are largely, you know, haven't been revealed, who have been um, detained here in Nigeria. And just the fact that in the U.S., the CEO, uh, Bi Binance CEO, stepped down saying that he, was, uh, he, he took responsibility for money laundering and that um, following that judgment by the um, Justice Department in the U.S., they mentioned that any um, suspicious activities on the platform would be reported to the authorities in the United States. Do you think that this is a similar approach or similar um, situation that's happening here in Nigeria? Because according to reports, um, what had happened was that they said that there were certain demands that had been made from the Nigerian end, which the executives had said they wouldn't, you know, they weren't going to comply with in immediate, at least until they um, went to the embassy. Do you think that this is one of the things um, stemming, uh, you know, illegal flow of money or money laundering in that instance? That's the first thing I'd like you to just weigh in on. And then second thing around AI, great that you're bringing that on the table. You've been talking about that for a lot of, you know, a lot of times. And some of, a lot of research has been done as to which jobs will be gone, which jobs will become unnecessary or obsolete, and which the shifting of jobs. So what executives have said is that it's not just AI um, taking jobs away from people, it is shifting the future of work. And so what people might want to begin to look at is what would be the immediate or in the very near future demands for work. And in those areas, they said that AI needs people to feed into it, to check its accuracy, um, analysts to check, you know, um, to check its efficiency, to feed it with information, so that's perhaps one area. So engineers, you know, will be looking at that area, and people should begin to look at that. But jobs that might be gone from AI: content writers, graphic artists. Um, we have um, hand, some handymen, um, drivers, truck drivers in some instances, and you know, just a number of those areas. And jobs that would stay: teaching or teachers, lawyers. At least to know that your job is, job is safe in the immediate. Nurses, medical practitioners. So it's not all. Um, doing away with jobs, the most important ones will stay. But the ones that can be done by AI will go. So people in that, in, that, in, in, that, in that industry should begin to rethink perhaps the future. Data analysts, for instance, I said, you know, very soon will be obsolete. So those who are still studying or doing data analyst courses should rethink perhaps now and begin to look into the future. But I'd like to get your take on the first one in terms of Binance, uh, money laundering, conversations around that. Are there issues of, well, they've cited issues of security around that so that before we say in its totality, you know, it's not the problem of Forex, but there are other bigger issues as well that are being handled currently yeah so we remember we reported it uh, on on arise uh, news when binance entered some issues uh, mr champion zeng in the united states that was kyc issues saying that they were not being completely transparent in terms of what was needed to get on the platform and so on and so forth plus you've also got the geopolitical concerns um, between the us and china and that has fed into some of these firms with links uh, to china remember when we covered that senate hearing in the united states where mark zuckerberg got torn to shreds uh, US 
US senators. The CEO of TikTok was accused of being a Chinese agent. So from Binance, th those are separate issues. So Binance issue in the United States, that is uh, around you know, money laundering and around KYC and also some geopolitical issues with China. Look at um, uh, Sheen. We, ran for, we, we talked about Sheen. It was either yesterday or the day before. A Chinese e-commerce company that's based in Singapore. They don't even want to list in the United States anymore. They're now looking to go to the UK. So the issues in the US, I think those are a bit separate. For Nigeria, it is current, again, the allegations from the SEC, currency manipulation. We hope to get, of course, I, so I, we will get more details on exactly how that currency manipulation works. Because again, it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, willing buyer, willing selling uh, platform. All right. Well, thank you very much, Rotus, for your time this one. We'll definitely get updates on that a new story as it develops. Thank you. Securities and Exchange Commission Director General Lamido Yuguda has called for more collaborative efforts among stakeholders in the financial sector to improve financial inclusion in Nigeria, promote economic development, and reduce poverty. Mr. Yuguda made this call at the inaugural Investment Forum of United Capital Asset Management with the theme, Deepening Financial Inclusion Through Participation in Collective Investment Schemes, a Collaborative Approach. Arise News Correspondent Omobolanle Adesui was there. Less than 2% of Nigerians with bank accounts own a Collective Investment Scheme, CIS account. This was disclosed at the Investment Forum, which was aimed at leveraging strategic partnerships and collaborations to reduce the level of financial exclusion in the country. The Managing Director, CEO, United Capital Asset Management Limited, Odiri Ogeni, while reacting to the statistics of financially inclusive Nigerians who are not in the CIS market, said there was a need to shift focus from merely getting more Nigerians to own bank accounts to educating them on the need to own collective investment schemes. So we brought together um, key stakeholders within the technology provider industry, as well as our regulator, as well as also from some of the financial institutions to discuss on how we can begin to leverage collective investment scheme as a platform to drive the financial inclusion agenda. Because what we've seen on the message around financial inclusion, a lot of focus has really been around banking and um, savings. You know, but the investment element has not really been a focal point of the financial inclusion agenda. And so we want to begin to push that investment um, agenda through investing in collective investment schemas. Executive Commissioner Operations, Securities and Exchange Commission, Dayo Obison, who represented the Director General, Securities and Exchange Commission, Lamido Yuguda, expressed the Commission's commitment to active partnerships that will improve financial literacy and boost economic growth. Financial inclusion is very important in ensuring that individuals and communities, particularly those who are underserved or excluded, have access to affordable and appropriate financial products and services in order to promote economic development, reduce poverty, and enhance overall financial stability and well-being. It resonates pretty much with what we're doing at the NGS, trying to drive retail investor participation in the market. If you think about the figure, uh, the master plan does have a figure of 5 million uh, retail investors in the market. And one of the ways uh, retail investors can actually assess the market is this uh, collective investment scheme. So we see it as a very good event. For me, the major takeaway is to um, align our thought to the regulator in terms of public enlightenment on the importance of collective investment and how that can catalyze um, investment culture as far as um, driving the financial inclusion. When conversations about financial inclusions are had, it is usually to get more Nigerians to own bank accounts. But with statistics revealing that less than 2% of Nigerians who own bank accounts are not involved in collective investment schemes, it is pertinent to have conversations around that issue. And that is why United Capital organized a forum like this to get more Nigerians educated on the need to get involved in collective investment schemes. Or mobile only, Adeshi. Arise News.